the hell is going on with Title 42? It seems like every day it's it's gonna be taken down. It's not gonna be taken down. They're considering it, they're appealing. The stay has stopped, the stay has started. Um, well, as of right now, the end of Title 42 has been itself ended at least for right now. Supreme Court, uh, Su Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts just yesterday temporarily halted what was going to be the planned end of Title 42, which was set to happen on Wednesday. That's the policy that allows the US to expel migrants at the southern border uh, without the chance for asylum. It's been a policy for a few years right now, and it's gone through many ups and downs since then. Roberts issued this administrative stay pending the high court's decision on whether to take up the case, uh, which we'll talk more about after a coalition of Republican led states earlier Monday asked it to intervene. An appeals court had already denied the state's bid to retain the controversial policy last week saying that this group, this is the appeals court saying this group of states had waited way, way, way too long to get involved in this court case. And so they were gonna allow uh, it to be lifted. Now the Supreme Court has jumped in uh, to save, I guess, the one of the favorite MAGA policies at this point. If you're not familiar with Title 42, uh, in the early days of the pandemic, the CDC issued a public health order that officials said aimed to stop the spread of COVID-19. In court papers, the lawyers for the six different families who, who entered the US who have launched this suit argue that COVID-19 was always a thinly veiled pretense to increase immigration control. And so right now, the ability to, of officials to swiftly expel migrants at the border is still gonna be in effect for weeks, months, a year. I don't know because they're not saying and we know how how fast the US judicial system tends to work. But, but before we jump into our conversation, I do just wanna say to the point made by the families that it's a thinly veiled pretext, let's be clear. It was a it was maybe maybe a reason very early on we didn't know about COVID, we didn't know all of that. Then it became a thinly veiled pretext for some time. To be clear, it's not thinly veiled at this point. When Fox News talks about Title 42, they're not pretending to care about COVID. Why would they? They don't believe that the pandemic is a real thing or matters. No, it is just talked about as a means to stop migrants from coming in. So if there was a thin veil, it has been cast off a long time ago. Anyway, Rayvon, I know that you have a lot of thoughts about this. Yeah, um, as far as it being thinly veiled, I mean, you can see that in the media ramp up uh, leading up to the Supreme Court decision. Fox News has been uh, running endless stories about the, the newest migrant caravan that is invading our country, which I think is such a funny term to use. It's If this is an invasion that you are scared of, then this is the weakest country on earth. These are people with almost nothing that they're bringing with them who are fleeing desperate situations and just seeking, trying to seek refuge, trying to seek asylum in the United States. So, so to frame them as some dangerous you know, force is ridiculous. The other thing they also try to say is that they're doing this to help protect victims of tra human trafficking who are being brought in. But the issue with that is these migrants become significantly more likely to become the victims of human trafficking when they're forced into these encampments just outside the United States border. That's it is an extremely point. dangerous situation there for these people. And one other thing I want to say before we continue on is the framing of them as illegal immigrants. Then, you know, the term would be undocumented, but they call them illegal. But it doesn't matter because that's not what this is. These are asylum seekers, which is a legal process of immigration. They are coming to the United States border. Uh, you know, declaring that they're seeking asylum, a legal process. So they're not coming here undocumented. And then so framing it in that way is just a you know disingenuous way to play to their ex exceptionally xenophobic base. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I that that was that was a, a very good point, very nuanced take. Um, you could, in theory, look at different sorts of migrants coming for different reasons. And if you wanted to draw some sort of distinction where, like if you were a Christian and you were trying to claim some sort of moral high ground, you would say, you know, obviously women fleeing domestic violence in Guatemala, we're gonna help them in, but but these guys are just coming to take our, like you'd say that, it'd be awful in a variety of different ways. You could do that, they're not doing that. They, they like, let's be clear, they don't give a damn what people's reason is for coming. And also, they don't give a damn what happens to them when they're stopped at the border or when they're cast out. If they go to these camps, if they get sick and die, if they get raped, if they get beaten or murdered or turned back and have to make a trek of hundreds or thousands of miles back to God knows where, 
They don't care. They're not interested in literally any of that. And they would really prefer if you didn't bring it up. It's rude of you to make them think about that sort of thing. Um, and look, to be clear, the number of, uh, of border crossings is projected that it would go up if Title 42 were taken away, at least in the short term. They have no idea what it's gonna look like a year ago. They never, or a year from now, they never do. But, but also, it isn't, I don't think, the disaster being presented on Fox News. It would go up, the estimates seem to show like a quarter. It would. Is that a good amount of people? Yeah, it seems like a lot of people. Should the communities right on the border be required to deal with all that? No, I think that the federal government has the capability and the funding to help resettle people throughout the US. But again, that's not what they're asking for at the border. They're asking for, at the very least, them to be thrown out. And as we'll see when we get into Tucker Carlson, possibly quite a bit more than throwing them out. Maybe stopping them at all costs from getting into the country in the first in the first place. Anyway, Ravana, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right. But again, what is the concern? What are they afraid of? If the number goes up by a quarter, if the number goes up by 100%, you know, a whole other 100%, what difference does that make? How does that impact the people who are, you know, fear mongering about this immigration border crisis? How does that impact you? What damage, what so so called damage does that do to the country? And they can't express that in a way other than they're encroaching on Western values. They're encroaching yeah. on their idea of what America is supposed to be. I've seen, you know, right wing commentators say that they're coming here and they don't speak English. So they shouldn't be allowed in. Last time I checked, the United States doesn't have an official language. So if it doesn't have an official language, the language obviously, the official language can't be English. So who cares one way or another if they do or do not speak English? I mean, the mm -hmm. the fears are just so so racist to their core and so so unfounded in reality. I mean, the other thing they'll say is they're going to come in and they're going to you know vote Democrat. They can't vote, so it's that's irrelevant too until they become citizens. So I I just I fail to understand what the fear is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. It's also so if your fear was that they're just going to vote Democrat. So first of all, you could, I don't know, not make yourself clearly the bad guy in this case if you wanted them to be interested in your policies. I mean, a lot of these migrants are coming from countries with fairly conservative Christianity at sort of the core of their culture. In theory, they could find some of your social stuff maybe appealing. And by the way, you guys also say that in the last couple of elections, like Donald Trump is far more appealing to Latino voters or something. Well, okay, but then you can't at the exact same time say that every single migrant that crosses the border is obviously going to be a big fan of Pete Buttigieg someday. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Oh, by the way, also, like your main argument for decades, I mean, your main. I would say that the subtle version of your argument is that we hate these cultures, they're gonna come in, they're gonna take our women, we hate them, they're dirty. That That's pretty clear from people like Tucker Carlson. But the main, I guess, substantive argument you would make is that they're coming in and that they're taking jobs. But you guys also will not stop saying that American workers are lazy and they won't work anymore. And we need more competition to drive down wages and all that. Like. Again, that is that is what they have been saying on a daily basis for at least a solid year and a half at this point. So. Like, are you guys talk constantly about the need for our population to grow and all that? And how do you think that's going to happen? You think it's just going to be conservative right wingers? I doubt it. They've never had satisfying sex in their entire lives. They're not going to suddenly start popping out more kids. They're already doing their best. Take a look at some of these right wing pundits. Can you expect women to want to go to bed more often with them? But anyway, look, what what is lost from all of this is any sense of humanity or compassion. I'm not saying it's a super super simple situation, and I'm not saying it's not a situation. But I don't think that just lining the border with containers like they've done in, I think it was in Arizona, is the answer. I certainly don't think that force is the answer. And we're, we're gonna turn to that actually in a minute. Any more thoughts before we move on to, uh, to Tucker Carlson, how he's been presenting this to his audience? Yeah, I'll just say that right now, like Title 42 is a huge issue. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Right now, one of the arguments that these Republican states are making is that it's a drain on their resources, that they have to allow undocumented children to attend their schools, their public schools, and provide them an education. And right now, there's legal battles going on to, although it's a decided issue, to make it not the case that undocumented children in this country are guaranteed an education, which is really concerning. And 
And you know, we see the same thing with the Supreme Court here. It's you know, an ideological institution that is heavily favoring the right right wing, far right conservative ideology currently. And their decisions are not based on any sort of like fundamentals of, of, of legal theory. It's based on what the Federalist Society tells them to do. So we there's like serious concerns right now over what how this country is going to treat you know uh, migrants, immigrants moving forward, regardless of what Congress wants to do, regardless of what the president wants to do, because we have this third branch that is so far to the right. And, and does not care about legal theory, does not care about a, a, a real justification for their arguments. They're just making ideological decisions. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.